I've been getting a lot of questions and one of them that keeps coming up is about boundaries. How can we have better boundaries, especially when it comes to the struggles that we have in relationships? How can boundaries support us? How do boundaries not support us? Uh, are boundaries something that we need? Are boundaries some, we hear a lot about them. We hear a lot about boundaries. Uh, so what's the point? Why are boundaries even necessary? Why do we believe we need them? There's lots of reasons. Uh, there's lots of reasons. And I think in, the, in all of the readings that I've done for people, when boundaries come up, they come up in reference to um, not externalizing the needs that you have, but being aware of the internal needs that you have. And what I mean by that is, um, we'll often open ourselves up or be available to someone else's needs before we'll be available to our own. And in doing that, you compromise your own uh, value, worth, and acknowledgement of what's important to you. So uh, when you don't have any boundaries, you end up uh, creating a, not only an inauthentic space, but a misaligned version of yourself and the person that you're uh, trying to potentially create boundaries for, whether that's a parent or a friend or a romantic relationship or a one-off, one-night fling that just didn't go where you wanted or that you'd like to go uh, in another direction. Like maybe that one, that one night only should be more. Uh, and boundaries are a requirement to make those things successful uh, at least i think they're a requirement boundaries help us let other people know uh, what it is we want what it is we're available for what it is that we're not available for or don't desire and how we're willing to continue to grow moving forward so uh, it, it, to, to go a little further in this vein i pulled some cards because that's that's what I do. I pulled some cards to see what else can we think about when it comes to boundaries and how can we be most effective? Why might we need them and how do we go through them? So I pulled three cards. And the first card that I pulled is Aeon or in, um, in a standard, now standard, Rider Waite deck that would be Judgment. So a couple things come up when I, when I, pulled this card and looked at it. I'm just gonna set it in front of me so I can see it. Um, I use the Heindel deck, uh, so that's why mine is Aeon. And it has these uh, a river of ice and fire. It has um, snow-covered mountains. There is a, a lake at the bottom of the snow-covered mountains. There is uh, fire and water raining from the sky. There are um, some beautiful barren trees on one side. There is a shadow on the other side. There is what looks to be um, a fetus in an egg coming out of the sky and this alien-like creature above that peering over these ominous clouds. And it just seems to be this, this storm of something happening, of change about to come, of an awareness on the verge. Uh, so when it comes to boundaries, when I draw a major arcana card, that usually lets me know that the person who's sitting across from me is, is about to learn a lesson or is going through learning a lesson that either A is new or B is one that they're relearning. Depending on the cards I see, I'll know if it's a, a repeated lesson or not. So um, as a lesson, when Aeon comes up and in relationship to boundaries, uh, one of the steps you can take is to be aware of what is calling you? What is important to you? What, what are the signs and synchronicities that exist around you that are crying out to you saying, this is what you need today. This is what you need this week. This is what you need in your lifetime in order to be successful. This is the direction you must go. And if you feel directionless, then there may be others around you, like those signs and synchronicities, but people that you're in relationship to who are reflecting back to you the boundaries that you need or the boundaries that you might want to explore to see if they're right for you. So uh, Aeon brings us the lesson of what is happening 
externally that we need to pay attention to, one. And two, what is our response internally as this, this experience happens that allows us to say, yes, I agree with this, or no, I do not, and here's the next step I'm gonna take. The, the big thing is, it's not in your head. You gotta get out of your head, always, out of your head, out of your head, out of your head. Uh, if you're in your head thinking about all of these synchronicities or what your response is, you've, you're missing the opportunity. The experience is in your body. How do you feel about those things? Uh, is there an immediate response to those synchronicities or those individuals around you who are reflecting back to you what those boundaries could be? And if the immediate response is there, then trust that and say, yes, this is right or wrong for me. It's a yes or no. If the feels are there, then how do you feel about it? Give yourself some time to think through it. If uh, you're having another type of experience, uh, maybe the expression is through talking to someone about it and exploring if this boundary is right for you. And you might need to find some people to hear your own voice talk about what that boundary might be. Uh, it doesn't matter what the other person has to say in that instance. It's more about you hearing yourself. So it, it could be any number of things. Those are three primary ways that you might experience what is right for you um, when it comes to discovering what boundaries might need to exist and the lesson of how to become aware of them and then experiment with incorporating them. So there's card number one. <laughs> Number two, I drew the Father of Wands. Uh, and for those of you who are uh, tarot folks and looking at your deck, this is like an amalgamation of the, the king and the queen. It's not quite the same of either uh, as, a, as a direct correlation. Um, and that's a whole nother conversation on if I did something on this deck. But just, just so you know what I'm looking at. Uh, so in this deck, it's Brahma, the Father of Wands. And what advice does Brahma bring to us? Uh, that there is a way to see what others bring to the table and what your response is immediately to what boundaries are most important to you. Uh, this card has a, has a couple different expressions. Well, it has a lot of different expressions. But two, if I think about two, one is I'm going to envelop all the things and be available for anything. Second, it's I'm being assaulted by all of the things that are um, not right for me. So what do you what do you do? Uh, you can one uh, recognize this in the behaviors and actions of people, the people that are around you. See them as a mirror. See their um, behavior, their action their personality as a mirror of who you are and how you're moving through the world. Um, there's a, uh, I can't remember this list of things that are the, the rules for life, he said in quotes. And one of them is that uh, you can't be, um, I, I'm paraphrasing this because I can't remember. Um, you can't be angry about, you can't be angry at someone else uh, because of their behavior unless you're angry about it within yourself. It's, it's like angry or happy about someone else's behavior, unless you're angry or happy about it within yourself. And so take that moment to reflect on that mirror. Are you, are you really struggling with what someone is doing to you? Uh, because how, how do you recognize that in yourself? Where is that behavior or action in you? Uh, and I think Brahma asks us to look inward and to see those things and then find the outward expression of that. So once you recognize this is there, what's the outward expression? Is um, someone's behavior so frustrating to you because you can't embody it or you won't or you have and you know the problematic side of it? Uh, if that's the case, then is the boundary that... Uh, I am going to recognize in this other person and know that they're on their journey and I've already been along this guidepost. I've been by this guidepost and I've moved through it. Or I need to learn the lesson again and that's why I've met this person. And it's not that I need to hang out with them, but now I have a reflection and awareness of what I need to pay attention to for myself. And the boundary is, okay, 
uh, I got work to do. That's why they're in my life. I'm going to kind of keep them at a distance over here uh, so that I can continue to do my own work, even if they're not aware they need to do theirs because it's not my place to carry them through. Maybe they'll recognize in my patterns and behaviors that um, there's a better way. So uh, the, the Father of Wands asks us to be available to the experiences that are happening around us and recognizing them in ourselves so that we can then take the next step of uh, generating the boundaries that are healthy for us. And then finally, uh, I pull the Seven of Stones. For those of you with a, a, a Rider Waite deck, if you're learning from that one or it's, or it's your favorite, um, this is uh, relative to the Seven of Discs or Pentacles. Uh, in this instance, in the day-to-day -day of, of building boundaries, it is essential that you remember that you're building a foundation. As you begin to build boundaries, or as you repair them, if they exist, it's all about the foundation. It is, the, it is something that is holding you up. It is something that you're standing on, like a platform in order to protect yourself from the, the mess and the mud that exists around you, right? It's kind of, it, it's, it's uh, lifting you up. Um, it may also, in its worst, build a, um, build a wall so high and a moat so wide that no one can get to you. So as you're building this, this platform and these boundaries, um, be mindful of how high it gets, of how thick it is, uh, of it, are, are there windows so you can see out? <laughs> Uh, is there a drawbridge so you can get out and people can get in? Uh, allow there to be flexibility in this. I, I grew up on the West Coast and uh, there were constantly earthquakes. Buildings are built knowing that they need to have flexibility in them to sustain uh, the movement of the earth and maintain their structure. And that's what you're doing with boundaries. You're building a way to main, maintain your stability, to maintain your structure, and yet be flexible enough to exist in a world that is gonna constantly challenge your foundation. And the Seven of, of Stones is asking us to, to be flexible and yet uh, continue to build that which supports us and protects us. Because it's, it, it's always gonna be uh, an ongoing effort. I don't think that building will ever end. All right, so I hope this is helpful, especially as we're going into, uh, at least at the time of this recording, we're going into the holidays in the US and around the world. Um, it, it, it's November, so there's there's been, we already had October, but now we're going into that time where people wanna go spend time with family, uh, living or um, recall our ancestors and those have passed. And, and call in uh, challenging experiences, conditioning experiences that may require boundaries uh, that you didn't have when you were younger. And so as queer people, uh, building that foundation, recognizing ourselves in, in others and internalizing that in a way that is healthy uh, so that we can then express it in a way that is also healthy and recognizing signs, synchronicities, and the callings that exist around us so that we can focus on those boundaries that are most important uh, and learn the lesson so we don't have to repeat it, but we can be available for it when it may come around and challenge us again the next time. All right, I hope this is helpful. Uh, if it is, uh, drop me uh, some comments. If it isn't, then drop me some questions. I'd love to uh, continue the conversation around boundaries. I think this is a an ongoing issue of awareness that uh, we may have further discussions of to come. So uh, thanks, everybody.